welcome, welcome one and all in here, out there, Mr. and Mrs. America, and all the ships at sea to what we call The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Ladies and gentlemen. What's going on? Uh, President uh, Joseph Robinette Biden is in San Francisco today meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping in the first conversation between the two leaders in a year. A year. They'll have so much to talk about. Trade tensions, global flashpoints, who got hot over the summer. <laughs> Spoiler alert, neither of them. <laughs> now, before the meeting, both sides tried to play it cool and set expectations low. In fact, both countries said that whatever happened, both Biden and Xi would not put out a joint statement after the meeting. So it's just gonna be a case of he said, she said. <laughs> the best. They can't teach that. China has a good reason to want to talk to America and its cash. For the past several years, China's economy has been struggling with anemic consumer spending and high youth unemployment. It's gotten so bad that second graders can't get a job at the iPhone factory. <laughs> what? And I'm, I'm being told, in response to that joke, Apple has canceled Jon Stewart again. <laughs> now. Now. There you go. There you go. Uh. Biden's going to be thrilled to be out of D.C. because Washington is increasingly a toxic dump. But yesterday, there was a glimmer of governance when the House of Representatives approved a stopgap measure to avert a shutdown. It's a big relief. But before I forget, let me record a promo for two months from now. Tonight on The Late Show, the government is headed for a shutdown. Also, <laughs> ravenous packs of wild dogs that now roam our streets. Is your front door strong enough to save your family? <laughs> The bill is the first major piece of legislation passed by new Speaker of the House and sitcom dad saying, oh, Smokey, Mike Johnson. <laughs> Johnson's bill had one major innovation. Unlike the stopgap passed by Kevin McCarthy, Johnson's so-called two-step stopgap bill would fund certain parts of the government until mid-January and others into early February. That is genius. Because instead of just kicking the can down the road, Mike Johnson cut the can in half, so now they have to kick two smaller cans down two longer roads. Johnson, Johnson needs, what's he need, two-thirds? He needs a two-thirds majority because to stop the bill from being killed in the House Rules Committee, he used a procedure known as suspending the rules. You can just do that? The gentleman from Kentucky is out of order because the floor of the house is now lava. <laughs> Two for flinching, no drops, no bombs, no backsies, no fudges, ollie ollie taxes free. <laughs> it is a victory oxen free? Oxen? Uh, or all come? Uh, ollie ollie oxen? Uh, ollie ollie all come? Uh, ollie ollie. I don't know. It's a victory for the new speaker, but Johnson's Republican colleagues are pissed because. The bill contains no spending cuts and was only achieved by partnering with Democrats. And as we know, every time Johnson reaches across the aisle, his son gets an alert on his phone. <laughs> now, <laughs> accountability. Accountability partner. Now, you'll recall that when uh, Kevin McCarthy, former speaker, partnered with Democrats to avert a shutdown. He lost the speaker job, but it appears Speaker Johnson is safe for now. I'll let Virginia Congressman Bob Good explain it real bad. We believe he's a conservative. We believe he's a trustworthy, honest guy. Uh, and he, we did put him in the game in the fourth quarter when we're down 35 nothing. so we can't hold him to the same standards as the guy who got us to that 35 nothing mm -hmm. deficit. However, we don't expect him to come in and punt on third down, and that's what we think he's doing here. Clearly... <laughs> Clearly, even talking about football causes brain damage. <laughs> the, ahem, uh, the, um, ahem. Really? Brain damage. Brain damage. The shutdown battle is the latest example of Republican infighting, and yesterday it became outfighting. There were some Donny Brooks in the halls of power, or as the media described it, Apparently, Washington's Fight Club officially got underway yesterday. <laughs> Senate Fight Club. Fight Club. Fight Club. Well, you know the first rule of Fight Club 
Let's talk about Fight Club. <laughs> for the record, I believe it is wrong for adults, especially representatives working on behalf of you, the American people, to resolve their differences with violence. But as long as they're doing it, <laughs> it's time for... The Thunder in the Rotunda! Capital punishment in the Capitol! Congress has filed a motion for pain! First up was the undercard, House Republican Tim Burchett versus former Speaker Kevin McCarthy. See, uh, Burchett is one of the eight Republicans who voted to oust McCarthy. And while he was doing an NPR interview yesterday, he took a hit from the former Speaker. Let's listen to the audio. Why'd you elbow me in the back, Kevin? Oh, no. Hey, Kevin, you got any guts? <laughs> Jerk. No, Kevin McCarthy has guts, but he doesn't have his balls. <laughs> They're close. They're close. <laughs> but there's a difference. <laughs> when McCarthy was then asked by a reporter about his flying elbows, he denied everything. Why would I punch somebody? Why, why would I kidney punch somebody? But like that, the, and if you, if you did, if I kidney punch him, he'd be on the ground. Yeah. If I hit him, he'd be on the ground, and then I'd kick him, and I'd take his bike and his Pokemon cards, and his girlfriend would be my girlfriend, and then people would like me. <laughs> After McCarthy's denial, Burchett doubled down. You're quite confident this was deliberate. Oh, yeah. Come on. I'll take a, I'll take a polygraph test. OK. OK. That's not how polygraphs work. I'm telling you, Julia Roberts wants to have sex with me. No, I've never met her, but I'll take a polygraph test. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean it. <laughs> but yesterday's title match was the near brawl between Oklahoma Senator Mark Wayne Mullen and the head of the Teamsters, Sean O'Brien, right over there. Mullen is a former MMA fighter, and as we reported last night, exclusively on The Late Show, he interrupted a Senate hearing to challenge the boss of the Teamsters to a fight until he was stopped by a surprise cameo. <laughs> Take a look. Sir, this is a time, this is a place. We can finish it here. Okay, that's fine. Perfect. You want to do it now? I'd love to do it right now. Well, stand your butt up then. You stand your butt up. Oh, hold on. Oh, oh, stop it. Is that your Sorry. solution? Every poll. Oh, no, no, sit down. Oh, Eric, sit down. Look at you. You know, you're a United States Senator. You sit down. You sit down. <laughs> Sit down, you too. You, 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 you. Sit, sit, sit. You, 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 you. All of you. All. Sit down. Sit, 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 sit. Sit, sit. sit. No. I'm breaking up. I'm breaking up this fight. I'm going to break up this fight like it was a big bank. Now, let's take a moment to appreciate the fact that I'm the only senator who's being recognized simply by his socialist finger point. Look, I'm a cat. Now, now I'm a dog. I'm a dog. I'm a fox. I'm a fox. Je suis. Je suis un renard. <laughs> now. <laughs> now, picking a fight on the floor of the senators, on the Senate is bonkers. But last night, Mullen went on a media blitz to argue, no, it's not. Are there any actual Senate rules that if two consenting adults want to duke it out, could you guys go bare knuckle if you wanted to? Just the rules. Well, we looked into the rules, and you know, you used to build a cane. You got to remember President Andrew Jackson uh, challenged nine guys to a duel and won nine times. So at the end of the day, there is presence for it if that's what someone wants to do. President, sure. If somebody's done something before, it's perfectly fine to do it again. That's why when I was a child, my dad used to take me hunting for Archduke Franz Ferdinand. <laughs> in a... Uh, wow. Now, in a different interview, Mullen explained that not only is he ready to fight, he'll do whatever it takes to win. I'm not afraid of biting. I will bite. Biting? Uh, I'll, well, I'll I mean... bite, honey. Yeah. I'm in a fight, I'm gonna bite. I'll, I'll, I'll do anything. I mean, I'm not above it. And I don't care where I bite, by the way. <laughs> wow. It takes true courage to go on television and say that for a righteous cause, you're willing to munch on junk. <laughs> Good for you, Mark Wayne Mullen. Arr, arr, arr. Just, 
You go ahead. For the Republic, you snap into a Slim Jam. Whoa. <laughs> this is real. This is, a, this is our country. This is our country. There you go. You try understanding that, sir. At the end of the day, Mullen explained that this is exactly what he was sent to Washington to do. I mean, what do people want me to do? If I didn't do that, people in Oklahoma would be pretty upset at me. That's not how we <laughs> raise. I'm supposed to represent Oklahoma values. Yes, who can forget the Oklahoma State motto, no mercy, bite his sack. <laughs> oh, it's not surprising that violence is a selling point for the Republican Party. The GOP hopefuls for 2024, in fact, are already adopting the strategy. Just look at this new Republican primary campaign ad. It's a tough time in America, and we need common sense solutions to real problems. Problems like punk ass Congress people whose kidneys need a visit from my elbow. I'm candidate for Wisconsin's fourth district, Patricia Corker, known to my enemies as Stabby Pat. I spent 10 years as a public school teacher and 20 in Supermax for a crime I pled guilty to because I'm proud of what I did to that man's neck. And I'll do it again for you in Congress. So vote Patricia for better jobs. Patricia for a brighter future. Patricia for cutting a bitch. I will burn down their homes and laugh in the ashes like an avenging angel of pain. I'm Patricia Corker, and I don't even feel this. We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Paul Giamatti.